Okay, this next one is an Islamic terrorist leader that meets Jesus and is converted um, by the love of Jesus. So let's get into it, man, because one thing that stands out to me about these stories of Muslims coming to Christ and finding Christ, or let's say Christ, you know, revealing himself to them, that he is the way, the truth, and the light, is the fact that a lot of them say that he they saw Jesus in a dream, Um and it's something else, but that's the main part that stands up out to me. But I think in this one, I don't think God revealed himself to, to this young man that way, but it's still a touching story. So let's hop into it. Let me just share my screen really quick. Um, I really have a heart to reach Muslims and Catholics. I'm just, um, um, actually, I need to pray on that more of how to do it the proper way. Um, but yeah. So this touches my heart whenever I see Muslims coming to Christ, um, Catholics, Buddhists, atheists, man, it's a beautiful thing. So let's get into it, shall we? In Pakistan, Javid was arrested in Malaysia for carrying illegal passports. He was thrown into prison. There, he had a strange encounter. And I would just uh, meditate in the mm -hmm. verses of, of Quran. And once, as I was doing that, I felt just a fear just feeling my heart and i felt literally a uh, presence of a spirit uh, this this spirit immediately made me feel um, new in my heart uh, what we call shayateen uh, satanic demonic spirits so i start rebuking it in the name of allah and I just cried out in Farsi, my own native language, said, God, help me. And the moment I... It's amazing how the enemy will try to, you know, give people a little bit of the truth as far as Muslims knowing that dark entities and demonic entities are real. But the devil not wanting them to hear the real truth, got them thinking they can rebuke it in the name of Allah. And we know that, you know, the only way demons tremble is through the name of Jesus. But it's amazing the devil will try to give you a little truth, but he'll mix it with the lie. You know what I'm saying? That behind leading the blind stuff, you know, because he know the word, but he'll twist it. You know, he don't want you to get the real truth, which is Jesus. Said that. As clear as you hear my voice, I heard the voice. And that voice said, bring it Come on, Jesus. sir. And the words that came out of my mouth sounded without thinking. Jesus, if you are true, show me yourself. That's right. That's what I tell them and to before say. before I was finished with the sentence, that break every chain. Ran away. And that, uh, that is how my story basically began when i'm meeting muslims and people that are atheists and they talk to me or i talk that's one of the first things i tell them is like act just ask just humble yourself just ask the lord like jesus if you're real reveal yourself to me just like what he just said that's exactly what i'd be telling them and i was like he will because he said it in his word it's his it's his will to give us the kingdom he doesn't want any of us to be lost and i think that's one of the main things that's a difference between allah and jesus allah teaches hate he teaches to kill people that don't believe in the quran or allah while jesus says pray for your enemies pray for those who despitefully use you. I have no pleasure that any of you are lost, but they all come to repentance. And it's like, if Allah was God, why would you want half your creation or whoever being killed if and without them hearing the truth first, if you are the truth? But that shows you that Allah isn't God, that he is the devil's deception. And he is called the great deceiver in the Quran too. But it shows you that Jesus is God because why would you want your creation to die? Hell wasn't made for us. It was made for the enemy, but sin separates us. He still loves the people in hell. It's not his will that we, that we go, but it's our choice if we reject him. But the thing about Jesus, Jesus is he said it's my will to give you the kingdom he said i came that you might have life and life more abundantly that satan came to steal kill and destroy he the deceiver Allah, the great deceiver but jesus said i have no pleasure that any of you were lost he said i don't have no pleasure in the man that the soul that dies why would you die follow me turn from sin live i came that you might have life but that all would come to repentance god is a god of love and the bible clearly shows the differences um between jesus and allah and jesus is not just a prophet you know he's god and where does it say in the the Bible Muslims say that Jesus is God, I worship God. When Jesus told the Pharisees before Abraham, they say, How can you be in 30? Not even have you say you've seen Abraham? He was like, Before Abraham was I am. That's another word for God. The disciples said, Show us the Father. He said, Have I been so long with you that you know not my face? Me being uh, my mother's daughter, I can't say that I'm her because we're still two different people as much as I look like her. So y'all say, Oh, he said that because he's just a son. They look like, No, he said, I. He took ownership. That's why they wanted to crucify him because he was saying he still was God, not just.
just a son, but he was God. He was like, don't get it twisted. No one's worthy but God because he's always exalting a higher form of himself. But he was still showing you when Pilate said, don't you know I got power to crucify you? He said, you don't have no power over me except what is given to you from above. He said, I have power to lay down my life and take it up again. Only he had power to forgive sins, not just through God, because he was God. And he proved because only God can forgive somebody's sins. You know what I'm saying? Even though he told the disciples, I give you power that, um, to tread over demons and scorpions. He told us that through his Holy Spirit. He said, I, I give you the power that if you want to forgive sins, you can. If you want to remit them, you can. Basically, if they reject me through you because you go and pray in my word, then you have the power to hold their sins against them because they're rejecting Jesus ultimately because God is sending his messengers. That's why he said that. But over that, and nobody has power to forgive sins but Jesus. That's why he was the only one that died on the cross because he was God, you know? And that is not my story of conversion but that's the beginning of my confusion he had another strange encounter in his cell and then i felt the whole room filled with the holy presence of god it is as if time stops you know things about god without him ever saying anything ain't that true we know right the first now. thing i knew you know god is holy holiness. he's holy his holiness and that's he what he's he holy god yes he is and um, i knew that he's just and I knew immediately that uh, simultaneously these things are going through my mind and my heart. And I knew I'm on hold. This is in spite of all the good things I've done in my life. I knew that I have sins in my life. And I knew that uh, he's just and he must judge me. And because of his justice, I deserve death. At that moment, I felt a touch on my left shoulder and a voice. That says I forgive you, and uh, he didn't understand. I did not understand. Uh, what? How could that be possible? Because because I had heard Allah is forgiving and merciful. But we cannot know his forgiveness till the day of judgment. That's crazy because I was literally just about to say it, but I didn't want to keep pausing it. But I was just about to say, I wonder if as a Muslim, they felt that relief like we feel from Jesus when he forgives us. When he said he heard Jesus say, I forgive you. I was just about to pause, but I was like, I don't want to keep annoying these people. But I was like, I wonder have he ever felt that before? And he just answered my question. He said, they never know until the day of judgment. And I've heard other Muslims that have converted to Christianity say, you basically never know what you have to do to get into heaven. It's just like, you know, I pray 10 times a day or how many, five times a day to the east, to the west. I got to step in the bathroom a certain way. I got to make a trip to Mecca one time in my life. But my thing is with Jesus, um, it doesn't involve religion. It's his blood. It's his sacrifice that saves us. And then we do have to continue. We have to continue in him. We can't just be like, oh, once saved, always saved. We have to continue to the end. But it's his blood alone that saves us. And it's his spirit that helps us live holy to get to heaven. But with Muslim, it's so much religion. Okay, you pray five times a day. You got to step in the bathroom a certain type of way. You can't eat pork. The girls can't wear their hair down. I, my dad is Muslim, so I know. Um the women have to be all covered up, but yet their husbands walking around with T-shirts, flip flops and shorts. Like, how is that equality? Like, how come you get to walk around freely and I got to be all walk bundled up? God said in his word that he gave women hair for their covering, for for uh, for glory. Like, let your hair down, shake your hair, be free. Who the sun set free is free in Jesus name. God gave you your hair to be beautiful, to wear as a crown, as your glory. Um, so it's just so much religion in that stuff. And he just basically answered my question. He's never known the love of Jesus and the forgiveness because he didn't have it. He had a lie. He had religion. And this is not preaching hate. And this is preaching love to those that are Muslims um, because Jesus, obviously, you're like the prodigal son. Jesus wants you to come home because he's your true father and he wants you to get to know him. But ultimately, for Muslims, atheists, Buddhists, anybody, new age, the choice is up to you. God gives us a choice. He's not going to force us. But God is love. But he's also a God of judgment. So he doesn't want you to die in that sin. He wants you to come to him so that he can give you life and life more abundantly. Who the sun says free is free indeed. And this is what he's feeling, that indeed, that being free, that that freedom in Jesus, that love of the Holy Spirit. And all at the same time, forgiveness. So, he I knows. Said, like, he who knows. are you that forgives me? And I feel forgiven. Today. Yeah, I can get to heaven for sure. Because he didn't know what it take. And he said, I am the life. way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth, and the life. Yes, he is. I did not understand what that means because I had never heard those words. 
So I said, what is your name? And he said, Jesus Christ, the living God. I fell on the floor. And I just wept. He told his fellow prisoners what happened. Some shunned him. Others followed him to faith. Man, isn't that, after isn't that beautiful? He said after two years, he was in there for two years. Isn't that beautiful that he can now spread the gospel unashamed if it meant him losing his life, if it meant him losing family and friends, as horrible as that is. The Bible tells us that nothing that we lose for Christ's sake compares to the glory to come. He said, when Peter asked him, one of the disciples said, we've left family and all to follow. He said, behold, you nothing compared that you've given up compares to the glory to come. You'll double, you'll gain that and so much more in heaven, basically. That's why God says, don't build your treasures up in here. Don't make man an idol. Don't worship images, statues, marry anything when he forbids all that idolatry in Deuteronomy. And we see them. Um, he says to worship only him. He says to build our treasures in heaven where the thief and the moth can't enter. He never told us to worship Mary. He never told us to worship Allah. Um, it clearly lets us know that Jesus is the son of God, but he's also God over and over. Here now, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. At the name of Jesus, demon trembles. Only in the name of Jesus is sin forgiven. He was the only one that was able to go to the cross because he was God. Well, who was he praying to in the garden himself? Well, who was he seated, seated next to on the throne himself? If somebody shot me right now, as you know, my body would go to the floor, but my spirit would come out and look at my body and then go to eternity. So am I two different people? My body on the floor, my spirit? No, that's the same thing. Jesus came down in the flesh, reincarnated, but he was still God and God was on the throne, but they the same being in two separate entities. Well, what about the soul? The soul and the spirit is the same thing. Here, uh, um, for those that worship God, must worship him in spirit and truth for God is a spirit and those that worship must worship in spirit and truth well what is the Holy Spirit the spirit of God the Holy Spirit Jesus said the Holy Spirit which I will send um what did he say um which the father will send in my name, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Cause it's power in the name, father, son, and Holy Spirit. They're all titles or attributes of God. See, it's like your mama, right? Your mama is a daughter, she's a sister, and she's a niece. But what is her name? Because it's a lot of moms. It's a lot of sons. It's, I mean, it's a lot of daughters and vice versa with fathers too. But what is their name? It's the same thing with Jesus. They don't mean three different people. Those are all three attributes of God. Like me, my, my name is Akira. Um, I can be a mother. I'm a daughter. And I could have been a sister, although I'm not. Those are three attributes of me. But what is my name? It's the same thing with God. It's not three different people. This confuses Muslims. They're like, you worship three different gods. No, we don't. We worship one God. His name is Jesus. God and Jesus are the same. God and Jesus are the same. They're in two separate entities. Jesus came down in the flesh and Jesus in the beginning was the word. Who's the word? Jesus. And the word was with God, the father. And the word was God. Jesus, the son, was still God, the father. And without him was nothing made that was made. So we're not talking about two different people. We're talking about the same person and two separate entities, just like my soul and my flesh, just sitting, having a conversation with himself. That's Jesus and God on the throne. It says that Jesus went up on the right hand of the father. Jesus is still God. He literally sitting there having a conversation, praying to himself. That's how bad he is. And by bad, I mean sharp. That's that's how poetic he is. He's the only one that can do it. If we do it, we crazy, but God can do it. He made us all. He said, he, he said, let us make a man in his image. He ain't talking about three different people. He having a whole conversation with himself. He in relationship with himself. That's how bad and awesome he is. And again, by bad, I mean sharp, fly. That's how poetic, that's how dope God is. He can sit there on the throat, see, seated on the throne next to himself, um, pray to himself. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And you're praying to yourself the whole time, the higher form of himself, which was God, but still him. So he's still God, you know. That's why when Doubt and Thomas seen him, you know, he was like, Thomas, you don't believe me. Put your hands in my in, your, in my side. A, a spirit, what do you say? A, a ghost can't have this. I'm, I'm, I'm risen. He was still the spirit as Jesus right there. He was still God right there. And that's why Doubt, Doubting Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. So that's how you know Jesus. Jesus is God. Like He's like, don't get it twisted. I'm still God. Like, yo, yo, only God can do these things. Only God can forgive sins and resurrect the dead. Like, not just a son, but God. He's in relationship with himself, but he loves you. Muslim, Catholics, atheists, please. Um, just ask God to reveal himself to you because it's his will that you have the kingdom and eternal life and that he reveals himself and he is the truth, the way and the light and who the truth sets free, not sin, not a lie, not homosexuality, not pride, not fornication, not twerker, not Beyonce, not any of these other idols, but Jesus who the son sets free is free indeed. And see, this is the awesome thing about Jesus. He can be the father, the son and the Holy Spirit, alpha and omega, the beginning and the, the end, rose and chariot, lion and the lamb. You see? You know what I'm saying? So see how he can do all these things, be all these things and still be one God. 
the lion and the lamb, alpha and omega, root and descendant of David. That's how awesome Jesus is. He's so poetic that he's all these things, but still one God. Here now, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. Um, I want to say that's Ephesians 4, but even if it's not, just Google the words. Um, yeah, God bless y'all.